Well, hi there, and welcome along to another edition of What's the Word in association with Ladbrokes, their Christmas special. I'm joined by Nicola McGeady, Danielle Blatt. We're not you? very festive. We should have hats on or something, oh. but anyway. Where, where are the hats? DJ, <laughs> where's the hats? Editor? Come on. Wait, what? Do I look like a fella that sells hats? <laughs> Careful. Johnny, how are you? Yours? Very well, yeah. Very, very festive. Well. Yeah. Good stuff. Very um, casual, Johnny. Yeah. Very casual. <laughs> and you, David Jennings, of course, joining us as well. All right, we're going to start at the top. Uh, what race of horse are you most looking forward to over the festive period, Nicola? Uh, well, I won't be there at Kent. I'll be at Leopardstown, but I'm really looking forward to the King George. It looks a great renewal, and it will be interesting to see if the doubts over my fight have, have been merited. And I just think with those doubts, it makes it an even more interesting race. And as a betting heat, it looks pretty hot. Yeah, good stuff. Right, Johnny, what are you most looking forward to at Christmas? It'll, race be, it'll be great to see Animix. Yeah, run, finally. I, I think he, he think he. I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up running in Limerick on softer ground than yeah, the one at Leopardstown. Yeah, um, so all the chat. I think he's supposed to have a bit of a soft ground action, so we'll see how he gets on. But really looking forward to seeing Walter Respect, actually. I think he's a very unheralded horse for what he is um, a grade one winner of a senior chase, who should be a big player in the Gold Cup uh, picture, I think. Good stuff. And you, Jenna? Uh, just on, on, on Animix and a couple of others, Willie Mullins has a, a Christmas stable, mini stable tour in Saturday's Race and Post. Good stuff. And holy God, he <laughs> has got about 10,000 entries. My hand is sore from writing down all this stuff. But it's certainly worth, very interesting. It's certainly worth certain buying certain the paper. Yeah. Was what Dave yeah, James no, it's the certainly worth says. reading. And, uh, and, but uh, yeah, he's got a couple, obviously. The, the, the race I'm most looking forward to is probably the Cotto Star and Novice Chase at Kempton because you could have Santini, Le Bagawa, and my hopefully future Chatham Gold Cup winner on top of the game, who I thought ran an absolutely extraordinary race um, at Exeter and his chasing debut. I think he's very good and I think he could beat Santini. But one horse that wherever it goes, I think it will win is Manila Fair, trained by Noel Mead. We'll be running the beginner's chase and expect him to turn into a far better chaser than he was a hurdler. They absolutely love him. In Castleton. Good stuff. Right, uh, let's move on to the Saturday action then at Ascot. We'll start with the grade one, the uh, the JLT hurdle. It is now it used to be the long walk. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm guessing Call Me Lorge tops the market here, Nicola? Yeah, five to two favour. We last seen him absolutely destroying the field at Sandown. That was in a very good race. However, the only thing I'd say is it was a shorter trip on better ground. So we don't know if he's going to be as effective over this trip and ground. You know what I mean, Harry is the second favourite in there, three to one. So obviously there's very, there's not much between them. And he recaptured his old form at the Ladbrokes Winter Carnival at Newbury. And I think actually if he can re reproduce that, he'll be the one to beat. What do you fancy here, John? Uh, this is a shocking race. Ah, shocking. Ah, can't really? it's like, I'll tell you what it's like. It's like buying a box of roses and just getting coffee sweets inside it. It's desperate nah, stuff. I think it's really, really poor. Horse. Yeah, uh, I think like the favourite, the nine to four, is it nine to four at the minute? Five to two. Five favorite. to two favourite is a horse who's never run over three miles, never ran beyond two mile five, who got its mark from winning a Mickey Mouse race at the end of the season at Sandown. He could be very good, but he's favourite to win a grade one. The stay novice hurdle division is very bare on stars at the moment. I'm going to chance Sam Spinner because he won it last year. If he runs to the same level again this year, he's a good thing because I don't think it's as good a race. I think Lammy Surge would win this race if he was in it uh, and he beat Lammy Surge in the race last year. I think on this ground, he'll make it more of a test and he's definitely the most thorough stayer. So uh, it's Sam Spinner for me, but I, I think it's a desperate We're race. top price Sam Spinner as well at 8-1, to one, so there you go. Good stuff. Johnny? Yeah, I'm happy enough with Sam Spinner. Um, you know, he'll probably never win a stairs hurdle. Looking at him last year, he'll probably never get soft enough ground or a soft enough lead. Um, but, you know, when he came onto the scene, kind of winning this race last year, he was, he was unbelievably game. He just kept finding. The ground is going to be testing, like, and I think that's what he needs. Um, and with Call Me Lord, I, I think he's probably going to be the best season long term, but it's his first run back and it's three miles. So there's a chance this will, if, if he ran well and finished second or third, they'd be delighted. He could, yeah. like, like in my head, he could, Call Me Lord could absolutely bolt up. He could, but like you're like he's priced accordingly and you just don't know what he's going to do. So I, I think he's the unknown quantity and if the race is as bad as I think, he could win. But so I think Sam Spinner is the... His, his run at Newbury wasn't as bad as it kind of looks if you if you looked on paper because like he, he gave plenty, he got tired and cheapies just might help him. Yeah. Um, jump early, he needs to jump Yeah, early. he will need to jump better. And like his, his future is a bit up in the air now if he, if he flops in this race. But like I, I did an anti-post um, stairs hurdle kind of selection lately. I, I, ten horses to pick that were double figures for Cheltenham. 
like I was like, how is Faheen double figures for that race? Because he demolished Penn Hill last year, and the rest of them are much more muchness. Yeah, yeah. So like I, I was saying to, to Rashan's trainer Colin Kidd that he should go for these stairs hurdles in Ireland because there's so little depth. Uh, when Faheen demolished Penn Hill last oh, punch sounds, sounds, yeah. that was the most impressive stadium yeah. performance possibly I've ever seen, and I don't I've no reason to disbelieve it. Um, but in, in both divisions in terms of Ireland and Britain, they're, they're lacking depth, mm -hmm. and yeah. this it, it's not a terrible race. But I think eight to one Sam Spinner is, is well worth backing with doubts about the others. Bear in mind he was about five to two to win the World Hurt Stairs Hurdle last year. He was three to one I think at Newbury something like that, and I give him the benefit of the doubt. You're right, it's not a terrible race. It's okay. a shocking race. Okay, okay, okay. Go on. What else do you want to like on Saturday? This Saturday coming, Christmas money, get it banged, okay. come on. Uh, I think there's a, a, a good thing running the one o'clock at Haydock. A good it's a thing. filly called Queen of Hearts, um, ridden by Kieran Gentons, who I think possibly could be a star over hurdles. Uh, she was beaten in a, in a maiden hurdle at Chepstow uh, on her first start over hurdles. The form of that race has worked out spectacularly well. No the score was third, beaten 10 lengths, won next time at Haydock, or at Hexham by eight lengths. The fourth horse who was beaten 15 lengths won next time impressively by four lengths at uh, Haydock. And the fifth horse who was hammered won next time as well. And even the seventh and eighth have ran well next time. I th th thought that was a really good maiden hurdle at Chepstow. I think she, Queen of Hearts would be very hard to beat in the one o'clock. And in the uh, 3.35, the, the, the big handicap hurdle at, uh, at Ascot, the one I've liked for this for some time is called Chatez trained by uh, Alan King. It's one pound, out, one pound out of the handicap, but I don't think we've got to the bottom of him at all over hurdles. Um, really good flat performer. Was beaten by Jolly's Cracked at the last time, but it got hampered and made a mistake at the last. Travelled really well, was just a little bit keen. So I think Chatez in the 3.35. That's a bit at, of a price, is it? Ascot Jets, 20s. Um, and in the 150 at Ascot, I was on this show last week, last week and I was really keen on Hell's Kitchen. Um for a race at Cheltenham. The ground went against him. If the ground does hold up a little bit at, at, uh, at Ascot, I thought Hell's Kitchen off 143 was potentially one of the best handicapped chasers in training. So uh, Hell's Kitchen 150. But Chatez, I'm really interested in the 335. Good stuff. And Queen of Hearts as well. Johnny, anything yeah. else for you on Saturday? Uh, Flying Tiger, what price are we in that race? Have uh, I'll get it for you shortly. From about about 14s maybe? In Something the like handicap that. hurdle, the three yeah, five at Yeah, this horse is fascinating now because I was looking at Faisal that was obviously with Don Doyle and he's the same kind of profile as Hunter's Call who won the race last year and that he moved from Ireland, had his first start for Ollie Murphy in this race. But See his mark though. The, the mark is one thing. He's absolute whopper of a, of a rise for Tipperary when he did bolt up, but also the ground. Like I think he's he's probably better on nicer ground. Um, so I'm going to go against him. Flying Tiger is fascinating here. Like he's I think he's even a pound lower than when he won the when he won the Fred Winter. He was six to one favourite in the county hurdle when he didn't really get into it. And um, he's been running in small field events this year. You can absolutely forget about that. Chester Williams has taken off the seven. Um, so he's he's he needs a big field. He's he's a quite a keen going soldier fortune horse, but. If this is to be, if he is to have a day, this race looks tailor made for him with the ground, a big field, likely strong gallop, and off his mark, I could see him being well backed here. Like he's, it's not in any way conclusive that he's lost his ability. He's run in and out a bit since, yeah. since he won the Fred Winter, but uh, he's, he's. It's he's, always difficult for those horses after winning the Fred Winter anyway, yeah, at that age. But like he, he, he went off like six as favourite for the county hurdle in March, and he ran okay. Like he, I think it was a bit of a muddling race. And he's a double figure price for this. Yeah, um, obviously uh, it's competitive. Great, best of luck to Tornado Watch as well. Um, Emma Mullins' horse. He has been an incredible servant for what he's done for, for the yard. Going to America, uh, running second flat maidens at the Curra, <laughs> bought for buttons. I think he might have won a Ballon Robe bumper back in the day. Um, so if he were to win this, what a fairy tale that would be. But I could see Flying Tiger being very well backed. I want to mention just as well in Thurlis, um I was invited into a last man standing competition uh, the last couple of days. Last man standing, the horse is running the first for John Magner. Mouse Morris doesn't have yeah. too many horses this year. This is a lovely horse. I think he'll take an awful lot of beating. That's in the first of Turles? Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, we were at lunch during the week as well at Nice, and we asked Jessica Harrington to pop up one for Christmas, and she said Rivetta, and she runs in the listed race tomorrow at Turles in the 2 o'clock. So that's probably just... Uh, worth noting. Right, on to the 26th then, and we'll start at Leopard Sound with the Racing Post Grade 1 Novices Chase. Pretty unique here. Mangley Khan ran a Racing Post trophy 
And now he's odds on favour for a race in post. Grade one, novices chase. Anyway, Nicola, how do they bet? Because it's actually going deep enough for renewal. Yeah, short priced favourite though in Mengley Can at four to five. We've seen that, a, you know, he bolted up a punches town. Uh, he looks like he's going to be winning plenty as a chaser and will keep progressing. Of course, the biggest threat comes from Mullins Yard. Uh, Voix de Rev is 11 to four in there. Then you've got La Richberg, who's got plenty of experience, more experience than the other two, five to one. Um, but the pick has to be Mangley Khan. Mangley Khan odds on. Would you oppose Mangley Khan? Yeah, obviously he's quirky and we all know he ran out at uh, Leprosen last year. But there was just two moments on his chase and debut at Punchestown where I just went, wow. There was two jumps. There was one at a side view about the fourth fence where I, I thought it was the most exceptional jump. He took about two or three lengths out of the field. And when, when Davey actually asked him twice for jumps down the back, I thought he had extraordinary Absolutely. scope. Yeah. Like maybe the camera angle overemphasised it too much, but it was like as if, like when he actually asked him, and I wouldn't even look at the last two, the, the last two fences because he was just he was so far clear he could pop them. So I would say that Mengli Khan has his knockers, but until he he kind of does something wrong over fences, I think he's going to be very hard to beat in the division. Do you think? Would you look past Mengli Khan here? Yeah, I'm not, I don't think I'd back him at 4-5 to five because he's probably better going right-handed, I think. And it's his second chase start. The, the race he won in his chase debut, I was there that day. They dolled off, I think, three fences. So it wasn't much of a chase, te a test for him. So this would be completely different. But he's a brilliant jumper. He's absolutely yeah. fantastic to watch. Vada Rev, if he runs and Lerichberg, it's going to be a good test for Mingli Khan because Vada Rev will probably go out in front to make the run in. Um, but... I, I think Mengli Khan is hugely exciting. He's an absolute pleasure to watch. And uh, I just wait a bit closer to the time that, you know, you might get... I, would, I just wouldn't back at four to five at this stage. There's a, there's a pretty short... If you look at the four grade ones, excluding the King George, you've got Bovardair, Santini, Gedebird, Mengli Khan. Would you put people off that sort of four or five yeah, multiples on that? I think top of that? the game would beat Santini. You think top of the game would be Santini? I wasn't blown away by Santini in that, like, I thought he was quite big at some of his fences. Like, he, he, he looks a proper sort of stay and chaser in the making, but he wasn't, he wasn't absolutely flying his fences either. Um, he probably needed the run. Um, yeah, like, he's, he's, he's good. I just wouldn't get too excited yet. Bovedair is unbeatable in that race, though. It's not a great race. It's that Christmas hurdle. Yeah. I think he's, he's, he's what, 16 pounds officially better than anything else? Yeah, global citizen. He'll probably make it into a test, and that'll probably suit him. He's just different class today. It's becoming a really, really crap race. Uh, the Christmas hurdle, you're just expecting, like, a 1-4 to four favourite and six runners or four runners since, like, the days of Faheen onto Boover there, It's just like... Do you what? remember Hatchball and Rooster Booster? Oh, oh, that was man. the day Santa Claus uh, ran onto the track. It was the day Kicking <laughs> King, King won King, the King yeah. George. And Carberry, despite being 15, 20 lengths off the gallop, uh, never panicked. They were the days. This yeah. is rubbish, to be honest. Yeah, this is not... A, uh, big day for Limerick. Ruby Walsh might turn the other way down the N7 and go to Limerick I mean that would be a huge moment for them wouldn't it for their grade one if he were to turn up and ride Gettabird yeah, here yeah uh, Willie this morning on the phone I said uh, Gettabird how's Gettabird he said uh, well the fact that Ruby is even contemplating and it looks like he's going to go to Limerick he says that tells you all you need to know he said so I think it's very fair enough. We're not going to add much, much more to it than he's that. He's another horse that's like definitely better going right-handed though as well. So he's, yeah. he's one of them um, horses just if you're looking with a view to Cheltenham himself and, and potentially Mingley can, I'm not sure I'd be getting... Yeah. I don't know. Uh, last year he, he, blew his, he blew his chance in the five minutes before he's the race. He's not a hurdler as well four, and he was too keen. There's so. a big difference between Mingley can going left-handed and Gettabird. Mingley can yeah. won at Navin. Yeah, and he ran well at Cheltenham. Yeah. Yeah. Gettabird is going to be about a four to six shot. Like, would you yeah. be back in Gettabird even at that price? I, I wouldn't you know, oppose I, him, no. Stick no. him yeah. in all the multiples. I, I wouldn't oppose the other board. I think, uh, I think if I that think company be one of the worst act. results anyway of the day, even though we let people down at Cheltenham and yeah. Manchester. The fact so, that Ruby is going. The ground will be very testing at, Lim at Limerick, which will be completely in his favour. Going right hand will be in his favour. He jumps well and Ruby's going down to ride him. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, um, that's plenty of boxes ticked. Let's move on to the big race of the day. It's the uh, King George of Campton duel off at 3.05. Nicola, it's your highlight of the yeah. Christmas. So, uh, go on. What do you make of it? Uh, well, Mike Bice, obviously, title defender and favourite at 5-2, to two, looking for back-to-back -back wins. Um, 11 horses stood their ground, um, so it looks interesting. I think waiting patiently at 92 has to be my pick. He's done nothing but impress me so far, unbeaten over fences, and I think he can improve again. Um, I just think with my fight, he ran below par at Haydock, and there just there's some doubts there that it's just not enough that I would want to back him. But if anyone can co course and back to 
you know, top form, it is going to be Nicky Henderson. Um, Nichols, he's looking for his 10th winner in the race. He's got Politologue in there at 9-2, who's been backed already during the week. Nine Bristol to Demai, 6-1. Thistle Cracks, 13-2. And Native River, uh, Gold Cup winner, has to be respected as well at 7-1 to one and sets the standard on form. I mean, this is a brilliant race, isn't it? And yeah. Like, John, uh, 9-2 to two Politologue does seem to be the wrong price in that list, but uh, aside from anything else, what would yeah, you Yeah, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's when you're reading out the prices there, like you're going to go, yeah, yeah, and then you go, whoa. When was the last time I looked at the market? When did the little log become yeah. nine to two? Like it's like he ha certainly has his chance, and I, I'm just not convinced that he will stay. Like I just watched. It. I know he's a different horse now, and he's had the wind up. But when you look at the the Queen Mother last year, he he barely got up the hill. Like and and I just don't know. Like it's, he's it's, just shortened up throughout the week. Yeah, it's the one they're yeah. Backing. and like I wouldn't. I'm not saying that I wouldn't be surprised if he won. I'm just surprised that nine to two is, is an become, absolutely yeah. horrendous. Yeah. Price. It's dreadful. Like price. all these horses are having their second start. They're going to be primed. There is. Like it's 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 shameful and I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed of myself. But there's only one horse that's overpriced and that's Bristol to Yeah. I, I, I think like I, I'm embarrassed even saying it and, and it's probably what about like, last year's it's, it's something so. like you're gonna go after the race and mm. you're gonna go, What an idiot I was. But when you go through that list and you kinda of say call it yourself, the new one fallacy. That's what you should do. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know if it is that I think we're like Obviously, I couldn't back him after he'd run the race last no, year. No, I know that. Like, I know that. But he did have... He was so fragile last season. Mm. Nigel Twist and David said it was, a, it was a constant, constant grind to try and get him fit each time. And, like, I just go back. I've watched the Betfair Chase now. I've watched it ten times. And he was the only horse ever going to win that race. And he was the only horse that was in his comfort zone the whole way. I think if he jumps the first two or three fences, fine. The wind up has obviously made a huge difference. Mm. Second run after wind up, he, 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 won, at, uh, he won the Betfair Chase. He ran well behind Mike Bite at Aintree. Look, he probably mightn't win, but he's the only horse in the race that's overpriced at the moment. What price did Mike Bite go off last year? Seven to four or so. Yeah. 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 Mm. How is he not overpriced? He improved, yeah, he improved this, some like, of his first this run This is a better year. race now, in fairness. It is and he wasn't race. impressed from the race well, last year. And he comes in on the back like, of... Yeah. Like, there's, when you, you don't have an explanation for his run the last year. So it's like, well, why did he run that badly? Shape well for three quarters of the race, but bombed out yeah. and... Native River is there a more reliable horse in training? Like, what okay. do you fancy? I at the price I go Native River because I think he'll run well. I've a, I've a worry about Mike Bite because he wasn't impressed from the race last mm. year. That form isn't worth tuppence. The the horse he beat last year wouldn't be T for three yeah. and they wouldn't be mapped in this. And obviously we got um, one more to the party. Yeah, <laughs> T for two. A T for two rather. I was on to. <laughs> God, I was on to Eddie O'Leary today. I was just like, God, is Shattered Love any chance she'd run this? Because like. Like, it'd be just great to see her. I really yeah. think she's a chance for the Gold Cup. I think, she, I think she's an absolutely outstanding yeah. place chance for the Gold Cup. The what Jiggy boys, they're so patriotic. Like, you know, Michael, he pays his taxes in Ireland and his horses are all trained in Ireland. And they don't run in England very often unless it's yeah. at Cheltenham. So, he, apparently, she's not going to run here. And I think she, she either will take on more to respect or she just won't run at all this Christmas. So, I don't know why they, they wouldn't... Because um, she would have a right good chance in this race, I think. Yeah. But um, I think Nathan River is solid each way because he's one of the most likable horses in training. He'll be out there, he'll jump well. I think Bristol to mine might fall into a hole again and I've a little doubt about my bite even though you could see him winning the race. Palita log at 9-2. to two. He's enough to prove without stamina to even be that price. Yeah. Right, go on. Along the line, who do we go with? Nicholas, start with you. Waiting King George patiently. winner. Waiting patiently. Johnny, King George Native winner. River. King George oh. winner. Bristol to my but like no confidence really. Okay, then. I'm actually waiting patiently as well, despite making a case. Will he for run? It. I, I don't know if he'll run. Oh, should he run. When does when does he run? When no, does I he run? I know. He has to be waiting patiently. The, for, the <laughs> yeah, forecast exactly. is so good for for Kent, and I just worry whether he'll run. Okay, then. let's move on to the 27th and the Carl Welch National uh, Brilliant Christmas Race. Raz and Murray looking to win it twice as a 13 year old. He's about 21, isn't he? Anyway, how do they bet, Nicola? Yeah, elegant escape. Colin Tizard is up at the top of the betting. It's six to one. Rand the tie is 8 to 1 Folsom Blue my own selection is in there at 10 to 1 um, yeah I think Folsom Blue looks well maybe I wouldn't say a great price when it's such a, a tough race at 10 to 1 but it's very hard to pinpoint it's a race that's absolutely tailor made for him yeah, yeah. very yeah. well bought uh, by Gary O'Brien Gary O'Brien for yeah. something like 21 grand or something 21 really seven. unlucky in last year's Irish National mm. as well he was definitely the moral winner um, yeah Three of the first four home in that national last year were 11 years of age. Is and Bell Hill age. not the moral winner, though? Like? Uh, a bit of a head the ball, though. You know, he, maybe had, he probably was the class act in the race, but he had the race in the bag and yeah. he threw it away. And that wasn't, it wasn't Folsom Blue's fault what happened. It was no. arguably more Bell Hill's yeah, yeah, yeah. fault. Yeah. But in fairness, 
I don't know if you remember, the conditions that day were absolutely <laughs> atrocious. Needy. It seemed like three years ago. So they ago abandoned now. the yeah. Tuesday yeah. after it. And like, that's you're like you're dealing with how much of a slog that was and the Warriors that actually ran in the race and then you did a finish where there was literally three necks between four of them or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in any event, uh, Folsom Blue will, will should have a good chance. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with the lads. I think Folsom Blue's got a cracking chance. Ramses to tell a very interesting cracking chap so far. Never been beaten around there. And I thought it was impressive in the trial. But just the trip is a little bit of a concern. Um, I, I think Falson Blue, it, the more bottomless it gets, the more his chance improves. A couple of great ones for us at Leopardstown as well. Go with that, um, the two-mile chase here, you got Footpad, Min, Castle Grace, Paddy. Uh, do you have prices yeah. for that, Nicola? Um, Footpad's even money. Min is in there three to one. Ballyushing three to one, along with Greatfield and Castle Grace, Paddy who I think looked very good in the hilly way chase. Looks a good each way bet at 14 to 1. What do you make of this, guys? Uh, Min won't run. Uh, foot paddle probably win. And it'd be interesting if Great Field ran because obviously we just don't know how good he is and he's just he's just a fiery front runner and overjumped the cork. But uh, it's not ideal coming into the race on the back mm. of a fall for foot pad, but it sounds like they've got him back. And I, I, I hope he wins because I think he's good a very vibes. good horse. Good, good vibes on the phone call this morning? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. So, if, would yeah. you be forgiving Foot Pad to that run at least? Ah, yeah, like he got injured early in the race. Cast Grace Paddy, I was talking to Pat uh, Fay during the week. He said, I was on about um, Dunvegan. Dunvegan. I was like, geez, I'd, I'd like to see that horse actually drop back to two miles. And he said, like, Dunvegan wouldn't lie up anywhere near. There's my phone going off. Who is it, what Johnny? A pro. <laughs> Dunvegan wouldn't <laughs> lie up with Cast Grace Paddy at all on the gallops. He's that quick. And yeah. at 14 to 1, you're, you're sure he's going to run. Yeah. But like foot pad, like even money, what price would he be if he hadn't run at Nace? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and absolutely. if Min isn't going to run, um, I, I totally forgive him that run because uh, uh, he was injured. And he, it was probably to his actual testament that he ran on and battled on to to be still, you know, second jump the last. Uh, also, the future champions, Novices Hurdle as well, that was so dramatic last year with all those fallen charger coming down and mainly can going out to the wing. How's how they betting this? Uh, well, we'll be up with it soon, but it's going to be around 11 to 4, Triple Cache. Um, Santa Simone is 7 to 2, Aramon's 4 to 1, along with Tornado Flyer, and Commander of Fleets 5 to 1 with Daily Tiger. Well, as well as you're the man with your finger on the pulse here because you've spoken to Willie this morning, so does Tornado Flyer run here in the two miler? I actually don't know. I don't know. He do you was. Go, do you want to go check your notes? Half talking to him for the Nace race. I think. Yeah, he said he'd prefer to stick in with two miles at the launch mm. of the Nace Grade One during mm, the week. So. Mm, yeah, maybe. Uh, it's it's hard to know what's going to turn up here. Mm. Yeah, Santa Simona good. be interesting. Santa because. Simona be interesting, and uh, Daily Tiger I think is a very good horse. Yeah. It jumps really well. I was impressed. The he, he is the, he is the one of the apples of Nomi's eye. He is, and he, the, a punch of sound, there's no way he was suited to making the runner. No. I know I know. he, he kind of had his he did half of a soft lead, but he just wants a He reminded me of a go native type. He just mm. wants a strong gallop. Mm. Very pacey horse, jumps well. Be interesting, this is a big test from Santa Simone will be getting the weight. Probably a little bit interesting. Absolutely. Uh, the Paddy Power Chase at 3 o'clock. Look, it's one of these brilliant race last year, obviously won by Annabelle Fly. Um, it's pretty wide open. Do you this isn't wide this? open. It isn't wide open. No. The okay. name escapes me will win this. The name escapes me will win. It's absolutely perfect if he gets in. If He will get in if he runs. Sorry. <clears throat> Geno, you, you no, love... No, I'm, I'm a huge you, fan You're of getting horse. married on January 1st, but I would say even Aoife falls short of your love for Noel Mead. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. they have many similarities. Yeah, yeah. Um, they like... Okay. They like... They like... <laughs> oh, mead, they like, mead and yeah, love They like their nights out. Okay. Yeah, yeah they like their, their nice wines. Uh, but... Um, yeah, but with... with uh, Sorry, you're, comparing, you're still comparing your future <laughs> wife to Noel Mead. No, and yeah. and you're, you're saying it so affectionately as well. This could yeah. not be working out better. This horse is going to sneak in under his penalty. Yeah. But the only thing I will say is with the name escapes me. And you just watch him at Navin. He just doesn't jump per fences as well as he jumps hurdles. He, he kind of takes... It's like he's a little bit scared. He comes into his fence, he takes an extra stride, and then he jumps them. Now, I thought he was fine, he's actually. He's so yeah. well handicapped that he might actually get away with it mm. in, in the Paddy Power. Um, look, he's got a cracking chance. I just go back to last year and just the things that you were hearing from the Mullen stable about Pear Brown Eyes makes me think that he could be a grade one horse in a handicap. So he'll need to be, but it'll be very interesting to find out. Yeah, absolutely. Quick chat about the 28, two grade ones there. You've got the Christmas hurdle over three miles. Faheen Apples, Jade, Super Sunday. Will, they, all Will they line up? Yeah, Faheen runs. Um, up against Apples, Jade and Super Sunday. That's a cracker, isn't it? I think Apples, Jade is getting better. Um, I think she win. Yeah. Uh, of those three? Probably go. Well, with you've Fahin. just said Fohin gave the best staying performance in the last five years. Yeah, but he also ran pretty poorly on his return. Um, but I still, yeah, I don't know what the price are for this, but 
Um, eight I, to eleven apples, Jade, and then you've got five to one Super Sunday, five to one Faheen, and Benny does. Two, early Faheen seven. runs, that's an unbelievable bet. Five, five to one, one is yeah. an unbelievable bet. He's run once over three miles, and that was probably the best three miles performance I've ever seen. Um, Post so, big up. Um, Penn Hill was the world hurl champion. He absolutely yeah. destroyed him. Um, five to one is an unbelievable bet on Faheen. If you'd be fairly confident, he was going to run. Okay, okay. Nicola, are you going to stick with Apple's Jade here? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would love a Faheen one because I know Apple's Jade is going to be one of those that's going to make up all the trebles and so on and accumulators. Good stuff. Yeah. And on to the big Christmas chase then. Was, and we're going to have, going to mention no meat again probably. Road to Respect presenting Percy. Are they up near the top of the market for that, Nicola? Yeah, uh, joint favourites, 11 to 4, uh, both presenting Percy and Road to Respect. By all accounts, it seems presenting Percy is in great form at home and with rain expected over Christmas, we've seen a lot of support for the Gold Cup favourite. Okay, Johnny, you're all aboard the Road to Respect bandwagon yeah, I'd here. Yeah, prefer if PP uh, wasn't running it, to be fair, and um, because I, I do think he's very, very good. But for him to beat Road to Respect, first time out, Road to Respect going left-handed um, on his prefer preferred ground after what he did at Down Royal, then he'll win the Gold Cup, I think. Road to Respect is my bet of the Christmas. Bet of the Christmas? Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I Jenna? was this time last week I was like Johnny, and I was all over Road to Respect, and then I did a piece during the week with Philip Reynolds. And, like, I cannot... I cannot tell you how, how enthusiastic and how bullish he was. Like he thinks this horse is a complete, doesn't train the horse though. A completely yeah. different animal to uh, to the one we saw last season. So it'll be fascinating to see how he gets on. Road to respect left handed Leperstown, you know, is the rock solid option. You, you will get an each way prize potentially. It might be seven to two a quarter of the odds. Come the day, he's around three is the moment. Yeah. If you get each way in road to respect, it's it's the most solid, solid each way bet. He's a banker to be thereabouts at the very worst. Cool. There you go. Good stuff. Right, uh, the, just mentioned the Ryanair hurdle as well because that'll be Sam Crow's fourth attempt in open company. He's currently out from three. He'll be up against the likes of Charge and Melon and that. Have you forgiven him yet? Are you, are, are you still, not, are you he, still he, beating he the drum? He didn't, didn't do the dirt in me or anything like that. He, okay. he, he, he ran his race and he was just... He didn't run his race. I thought he He's, ran his race. Sancro will never, ever make the run again, ever. Remember the yeah. time over hurls at Navin, he beat Willie's mare. He was no way impressive. Yeah. I don't think he's made the run since, and he never will again, ever. Yeah, 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 no, but... So I, you have written off Sancro now, that's you. Don't no, no, I, I haven't. I, 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 I thought all season they should be chasing, but he will never make the running again. Mm. And I think if he rocks up in the champion hurdle off a strong pace, he'll be thereabouts. He'll be thereabouts. What about in this race? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they're going to run in it to ensure a gallop. Um, but I still think he'll probably take the beat. I thought I was asking Willie about Mellon because he didn't run at Punchestown um, in the Morgiana because he hadn't been working well. And I just said, Is his work been better? And he was like, Oh, yeah. And I said, Will he run? And he was basically like, Of all the horses I spoke about, Mellon was the one where I was like, Whoa, do you know you're Well, Mellon has formed that mm -hmm. beat yeah, Sam Crow yeah. on he, the line he, he, through over there. By so. all accounts, he's back to his best. But like, I'd be disappointed if Sam Crow couldn't beat Mellon. Mm. Disappointed if Sam mm. Crook couldn't beat Mellon. Mm. Okay, well, on that note, let's finish up for Christmas and we get our best bets for the festive season. Go on, Nicola, we'll start with you. Three for the festive okay, season. Okay, we've discussed so much. Okay, I'm going to say, actually, we, I didn't mention in the Silver Cup on Saturday, I really like Full gra Glass, who will really appreciate the ground. All his best forms come on heavy ground in France. King George, I'm going to go with waiting patiently. Hopefully, we'll show up and Folsom Blue in the Carl Welsh National. Good stuff. Johnny, um, three for the Okay, uh, three for Christmas, including tomorrow. Uh, well, last man are. standing, road to respect. And um, this, you might laugh at this, but the 27th, 310 at Wolverhampton, a horse called Matt. <laughs> what? Horse, a horse called Mansfield, right? <laughs> right? A horse called Mansfield. <laughs> now, if you back this horse on the. If, you, if this horse is declared on the 26th, you could back Mansfield on the 26th. We've just previewed 11 Group 1s and you're putting as a watch. As a mate of mine says, they might pay out if the football team wins, if Mansfield wins. Mansfield. Mansfield was ridden by Robert Winston last week in a, in a handicap. I, I honestly can't remember a horse as unlucky as he was. He was he was he must have had a stone in hand and he finished okay. third. Um, he's been for quick compensation.